word from t- for today is from 1 Samuel chapter 3. 1 Samuel chapter 3, reading the whole chapter. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we'll read the whole chapter. Uh, well-known passage. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days, and there was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass that at that time, while Eli was lying down in his, his place, and when his, eye, when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down. That the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. And he went to lay down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose, and he went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And he answered, I did not call you, my son. Lie down again. And Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor the word of the Lord was yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again a third time. And he arose and he went to Eli. And he said, Here I am, for you called me. And Eli perceived that the the Lord had called the boy. Therefore Eli said said to Samuel, Go and lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went to lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do something in Israel at which the ears of everyone who hears make will tingle. For that day I will perform against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his, his house, from the beginning to the end. For I have told him that I will judge his house forever, and that the iniquity which he knows, because his, his sons have made themselves vile, and he did not restrain them. And therefore I have sworn to Eli's house, shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. So Samuel lay down until the morning, and he opened the doors of the house of the the Lord. And Samuel was afraid to tell Eli his vision. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, he answered, here I am. And he said, What is the word that the Lord spoke to you? Please do not hide it from me. God do so to you, and more also if you do, you hide anything from me of all the things that he said to you. Then Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. And so Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel had been established as a prophet of the, of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, and the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh by the word of the Lord. As we've already been reminded, uh, whatever our circumstances, whatever our ministry, one thing we can do is pray. And perhaps nothing is more important, more urgent at this hour, this time. 
But it is one thing to be an intercessory people, a people that uh, uphold one another uh, before the Lord, as we, we seek to do, and a people that intercede for this lost and uh, race, uh, fallen world that surrounds us and our friends, our neighbours, and this, these situations uh, where circumstances seem to be so, so lost. We can be an intercessory people. But beyond that, there is a sense uh, where we can actually leave the presence of God as a prophetic people, uh, a people that have his word on our hearts in a way that's uh, immediate and urgent, that we know exactly, uh, we're convicted exactly of what we should do or what we should say in certain circumstances, uh, and that we're a people able to face the world uh, with that sense that we have been directed by God, instructed by God, left the, his uh, in, intimate presence, but we can still contain his intimate word, uh, his word for us now, for this situation, whatever we face, or the, these people. And uh, we see a situation where the Holy Spirit really moves before us and uh, convicts people of the, the truth of God's word. Uh, that is uh, perhaps a, another challenge, that sense of moving on, on from just being an intercessory people to being a, a prophetic people, a people that carry God's word out uh, with us as we go into the word, world in a very immediate sense. And there are things in this passage that may help us to just think through uh, or to ponder upon uh, Perhaps things that we can uh, do, they're all from very familiar things, but we can be reminded of that may help us uh, to uh, dwell in the, perhaps in the intimate presence of God in a way that, that where we have confidence in hearing his word or seeking out to hear his word in a very immediate sense. Note as you come to this passage, uh, Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. Samuel's very existence was born out of prayer, came into being out of prayer, as we read in verse 1. Prayer that was uh, absolutely sincere, prayer that was urgent, prayer that was a uh, desperate, um, a real cry from the heart, and prayer that the grace of God responded to and answered. Any ministry of any depth and importance will have been like that, born really out of prayer, sincere uh, prayer that's actually a cry from the heart. And that uh, Samuel had been dedicated to the Lord. He, his life had been given right at, completely over to the Lord's service. Uh, that was his role in life, what he was being prepared for, what he was being trained for, uh, solely just to serve the Lord. He dwelt in the tabernacle, the place where the presence of God dwelt, in, uh, uh, or people could seek uh, the Lord's presence and the Lord's guidance. And he, he was under the instruction of Eli, the most senior spiritual leader in the, in, the, uh, in the country, the man that had taken the responsibility uh, for being the, the, the high priest to minister to the Lord in the tabernacle uh, for many years. And they're all perhaps factors that we can... Uh, 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 think, perhaps ponder on, is what we're seeking really born out of prayer, sincere prayer that's actually a cry from our heart? Are we, is the situation really consecrated to the Lord? Are we seeking the Lord's holiness, the Lord's presence, and committed to that? Now, if we... Because Joshua was told before he entered the promised land, consecrate yourself, because tomorrow I will do great wonders amongst you. That sense if that if we expect God to act, have we uh, really consecrated ourselves? 
do we seek to dwell as much as uh, we're able in the what might be called the intimate presence of God? The God's close presence. Are we taking the, on the wisdom and the guidance of those who've gone before and those who've shown great leadership? They're all things that we might help us to think about. But we also know that, note the situation in the land at that time. The, uh, the, the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. We note that Eli's eyes were dim. And we note that the candle in the tabernacle was burning low. It was soon to go out. All those things perhaps have a relevance for us. We know very, that the word of the Lord is rare in this land now. There are many, many Bibles available, but the, that word is not in men's hearts or even in their minds known to them. And there is no widespread revelation. But there's also the sense, perhaps, of a, a leadership whose eyes are dim, whose vision is very limited. And if the church is the, a light to the uh, world outside, it, in this land it burns very low. It hasn't gone out. It's still a day of grace. But perhaps it's... Uh, coming to the end like that uh, lamp in the, the tabernacle. So an urgent situation. But within that situation, God speaks. And he speaks to this young boy. But it's the start of a new era. And it's the beginning of a whole, whole new era. When God speaks, we all know what his word can do. But hearing this, his word, his, his word um, is not always perhaps that easy. But we note uh, that uh, Samuel's instant response, he was available and he was ready. He lacked wisdom at that time. Read, he did not know the Lord in, in an intimate sense. Uh, he, he hadn't heard the Lord speak to him in a way like that before. But he was available. Just uh, perhaps the first thing that if we are <coughs> to hear the Lord speak, there is that sense of actually being available and being responsive. But it took the wisdom of a, an older man to guide him to the truth, to, to point him to, to hearing uh, the, God's word, to actually listen to it, to be ready for it. <clears throat> Again, discerning the Lord's word is perhaps not always easy. And the guidance of those who are mature in these things uh, it is necessary sometimes, is helpful. But it comes to the point where Samuel responds to Eli's wisdom and he says, Speak, Lord, your servant heareth. Are they words that we really want to utter? Because in one sense, for God to speak to us is wonderful. For his word, you know, his word, to open up his word is wonderful. But it also brings great responsibility and great con conviction. The word of the Lord is not always perhaps what we would want to be hearing. But we do we have that availability. Lord, this is your word. Lord, speak. Your servant heareth. I'm going to hear this word. I'm not going to deny it. I'm going to hear it because it's you speaking. 
and the Lord speaks to him. But it's a message of judgment. I'm sure many of us would long for the Lord's word, long for a word of comfort, long for words of guidance, long for words of reassurance. And very often as we open up the word, we, 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 we receive that. But uh, we cannot expect God to speak and to speak to his church without having a word, a, a, a word of judgment, a very serious word of judgment. For our times are perhaps like uh, the time of Samuel. You know, we, we read in the previous uh, chapter that Eli's sons were com completely corrupted. We were reminded in this chapter their, their conduct is called vile. It's actually at a stage where um, it cannot be atoned for, the God will not forgive it. And they're under imminent judgment. And we read in the next chapter that they seek to go into battle. And that battle is a failure. And they, they die in that battle. There is no point, really, I think, perhaps from uh, the church seeking to take the gospel out with the state it's in because it will end up in failure. And I, that's a generalisation. I'm not talking about individuals. Uh, because there is the same sort of corruption even within the leadership, within the body of the church as there was in the priesthood at that time. So there was a, a dealing with what was wrong before the, uh, they could move on to a time of victory. When God speaks, it can be a word of judgment. And we need to be prepared for that. As Eli was, he, he'd already heard that word. He, um, we read in the previous chapter that an unknown prophet had come to him and told him the same thing. Uh, so it had already been revealed. And it was being confirmed here, as God tends to do. You know, you get that confirmation uh, very often uh, that it, um, if it is God's word, God's true word, it will be confirmed. So Samuel was ready. Uh, Samuel shared that message. He was afraid to. It was a difficult message, as God's word often is. But under instructions, he shared that message and he held nothing back. So key, isn't it? You know, with God's word, how we would love certain parts of it, love to present it in, a, in a, a certain way. That is what the world does outside with everything. What happens on our news or happens uh, in the world of advertising or uh, all sorts of promotions or whatever. It's all doctored to present something in a certain way, to, to, uh, to produce a certain viewpoint, uh, a certain uh, angle. God's word that is sincere and true needs to be presented in a way that is holistic, that is whole, that where nothing is held back, where we're not picking out bits we like and uh, turning a blind eye to bits we don't like. Not seeking to manipulate it so it's uh, uh, presentable when it's, it's difficult. Samuel held nothing back. That was so important for the beginning of his ministry as a prophet. He did not have a future as a prophet for the Lord if he was going to hold God's word back because God's word is very often difficult. It was uncompromised. And we know Eli's response, it is of the Lord. God's word will be recognised. It is of the Lord. God's word when it's not compromised. But when we read on, we read that none of Samuel's words, as he grew in the Lord, fell to the ground. That's a lovely phrase, isn't it? And we're, we're the, you know, the words did not 
in, fall in vain. They did not uh, just fall to the ground, they achieved their purposes. And we read in Isaiah, of course, that God's word never returns void, but re achieves its purposes. Uh, when it is true. And that, that was so for Samuel's ministry. The word through him was not a word in vain. It was a word that achieved its purposes. It did fall to the ground. And uh, as we go on okay, in the next verse, we read that the, all Israel from Dan to Bathsheba knew that Samuel had been established as a prophet of the Lord. Ministry generally, ministry of the tabernacle only uh, existed in really a small area in the central of, uh, of Israel then, uh, really up at the top of Judah, um, you know, in the area of Shiloh and several, and moved perhaps to a couple of other points. But it was a relatively small area that, even, that Samuel actually uh, and the priests uh, moved round. And yet for the whole of this country, uh, the whole 80 miles or whatever it was, right, or 100 miles from Dan, uh, from right up in the north, down to Bathsheba in the south, had heard, knew that Samuel was a prophet of the Lord. Word had spread. The Lord's word was spreading through Samuel. This, um, uh, he is a prophet. This is God's word. This is what's been said. Years ago, when I was employed, uh, uh, my boss of the time, his father had uh, uh, been in East Africa during World War II, and uh, they had a very influential padre, uh, a padre that had been very influential in his life. But uh, when a, a senior a gen a military figure, a general or whatever, came to inspect their whatever it was, encampment, uh, their uh, place, they were very surprised to find that a church had been built, a church building, because it was right in the midst of a Muslim area. And uh, he was told, oh, the locals, uh, you know, they know he's a holy man, because this, this padre went evangelising amongst them, you know, in this, this heavily Muslim area. He's a holy man. You know, he brings God's word. That they knew. That whether it was the Europeans, you know, the soldiers that he was witnessing to, or whether it was the people of Africa with their Muslim background, this man was seen to be, you know, a prophet of the Lord. He, he brought God's word. He's a holy man. Now that was like Samuel's ministry. You know, God's word through him did not fall void. But it spread right throughout the land, from Dan to Bathsheba, from Bathsheba to Dan. So, the ability to hear God speak and the ability to respond to what he says and to share it across the land. We may be not called or able, ever able to be a prophet in the sense that Daniel were, was, but we can be a prophetic people. God can speak to us and we can share that word and that word will not return void. So be encouraged uh, as we think about the things that uh, uh, brought Samuel close to the Lord that allowed him to be used in such a remarkable way by the Lord. And maybe our ministry can be encouraged and empowered 